Hey there, it's me, Lisa the Love Coach, and I wanted to come at you guys with a video on dating and relationship anxiety. Why does this happen? What is going on in the mindset that is making this happen over and over and over and over again? And what you can do about it. So before I begin, I would love it if you interacted, commented on the um, space below. You're gonna be hearing some stuff in here that might resonate with you, so please feel free to comment. I do read all of the comments, and I often single out people that I get in touch with to reward with a free coaching session with me, Lisa the Love Coach. So let's begin. Dating anxiety, relationship anxiety, what are the processes of it, like the phases of it, why does it happen and how to make it stop, how to get a handle on your mindset because it's making you crazy and everyone crazy around you. So dating's supposed to be fun, relationships are supposed to be a give and take of growth and love and an exchange of positivity, but sometimes it's not always that and it can play tricks on your brain and make you feel like the world is crashing around you just because things aren't going your way. So why does this happen? Let's take dating. Let's begin with the process of dating. So let's say you do not have clarity about what you really, really want. Let's say you think you know what you want, but you haven't really done the detailed work to decide what it is that you want. So you're kind of dating like by default. You're just kind of going out and about and just like, oh, let's see if I vibe with somebody. Let's see if, you know, they blend well with me and I get along great with them. Now, the problem with this is if you're a friendly person and you are open and, you know, communicative and um, willing to mix it up and talk with different people, you pretty much could find somebody great to connect with, like online at Motor Vehicle. Like this isn't anything, you know, spectacular. You're looking for extraordinary. You're looking for someone that you're going to invite in to your life. So step one on how to mitigate this dating anxiety, which has people walking around like, is that my person? Is that my person? I don't know. I can't tell. Are they gonna lie to me? Are they truthful? Are they honest? Are they trustworthy? Are all these things, right? You, you, you have to really know what matters to you first and you have to know what you're doing with your own life so that then you can just effortlessly, easy breezy, go out, hang out, live life great, knowing that you're gonna keep yourself safe. You're gonna know what questions to ask. You're not gonna have any anxiety. You're not gonna be like, oh my God, this guy's talking to me. Oh my God, this girl's talking about me. What kind of angle is she coming at me with? What kind of angle is he coming at me with? You're not gonna have that like pent up like, bah, kind of energy. Instead, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm just hanging out. It's all good. I'm just chilling. I'm just hanging out. No need to control anything. I'm just gonna allow some fun to happen. And I know how to keep myself safe. I know what questions I need to ask of somebody who might show romantic interest in me. I know exactly what to ask, right? So a lot of this work happens before you're even out and about. So the more we know ourselves, the more we know what we want, and what to ask of other people to determine if they're it, the more in the moment we can live and the more chill we are and the more like, hey, you know, it's all good. We're just gonna mix it up and have fun. So let's say, hypothetically, right? You go out, you meet somebody amazing, and then you start to date, you go out a few times, and you're like, wow, like this person's pretty cool. The next point of anxiety becomes, oh my God, how do I not mess it up? oh my God, I like this person, we've been seeing each other, and like, when do we take it to the next level? When do I know if they are only seeing me and we're a thing, and how do we have that conversation? People get so anxious about this. So again, you have to know what your dating style is. First, you need to know what kind of life you're living, what do you want for yourself. Second thing is, who is the ideal person for you based on that life vision for yourself? Like, who are you inviting into your life? Number three, what do you have to ask these people to decide whether or not they're it? And number four, once you think they are it, how do you need to be talking about the way you date, your dating style? Are you into juggling five people at once or are you more a one-on-one -on -one type of person where you go all in on someone 
to see if it could actually work out. And then if it doesn't and you're just friends, you could actually be friends because you never did anything shady to each other while you were dating, see? So you have to decipher what type of dating style do you have? How do you, what feels good for you? And then how do you communicate that to the other person in a way that's, you know, respectful yourself, respectful of them, not masculine, not, you know, combative, but just like, hey, here's how I, how I roll. This is, this is how I date. This is what I do. Here's how it works best for me. And hopefully that's a fit for you. And if it's not all good, you found a friend in me no matter what. Ease is the anxiety. When you come at it secure and confident and you know what you want and you're open and happy and chill because you're not attached to the outcome one way or another, then it's all good. No anxiety. No anxiety. You guys are creating and ladies are creating your own little monster of anxiety for no reason at all. All the work that you do prior squishes all that anxiety in the what I find in my coaching practice is a lot of people are not doing that preliminary soul search work on themselves. They're not asking themselves, what do I want out of my life right now? What do I need a partner to be like to fit into my fabulous life that I'm creating right now? And so then what you end up finding are people who miscommunicate. They end up being together and they take this position where we have to make this work, we have to make this work, as if, you know, the course of humanity depends on whether or not these two people matter and make it together, right? Yeah. Relationship is, uh, you know, the be-all, end-all for the existence of mankind. Stop putting that kind of pressure on yourselves, people. It's just dating, we're just figuring out if this is something that can be long-standing or is this something that's just, you know, hey, we dated for a couple of weeks, we saw it was more of a friend thing, and now we're just cool with each other. So what I would like to encourage you guys to do is, and you can comment, if you've ever had any dating anxiety in the past, and where does it come from? What phase does it come from? For some people, it comes from, you know, the second they're on a dating app and somebody says, hey, how are you? Like, they freak out, like instant anxiety, probably because they're not prepared. They don't even know how to engage in a communication, either on text or if somebody reaches out to them on social media. I know Instagram and Facebook are also popular places where people start conversations and meet people. So they don't know what to do. So they get anxious right away. It's like shocking. It's like, oh my God, somebody actually said hi to me. And what do we do? And it's anxious, instant anxious. Instead of saying like, okay, breathe like a queen. Look at your phone and say, let's see, let's see what this person's about. And, oh, they have a dog. Oh, they play softball. Oh, they drive whatever kind of car. Oh, and then you make a comment like, hey, you have a French bulldog. I have a, po I have a Pomeranian. How old is your dog? He's so cute. And you start a conversation. So. These are the things that, if not handled, will lead to anxiety. And life's too short for that kind of bullshit, so you gotta really kinda hone it in, do the work. I encourage you to come on over to uh, lovequestcoaching.com. That's where I'm hanging out, my website, where I offer you a free love life assessment. So if there's any kind of anxiety, weirdness, any kind of like glitch, or um, you know the point of dating where you're like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool with the dating. I get good dates. But then we start to date, and then it gets into the weird murky waters of, you know, are you only seeing me? Are you seeing other people? Like what goes on? I don't even know to have that conversation. Bleh. You gotta master the tough conversations. You gotta do it with grace. You gotta do it with ease. You gotta do it with integrity for yourself, right? When you learn the scripts. Of what to say, how to say it in your own words, in your own feeling, then it comes across authentic and awesome and you just own your truth. Now the other thing that gives us anxiety is when, I mentioned it earlier, there is a heavy attachment to the outcome. What do I mean by this? I mean you're really, really, really hinging your self-worth and your validation and your goodness to a relationship which is a trap so like you're worthy like bam you're watching this video right now like you're worthy 
there's the message for the day. You're worthy. Say, hi, my name is, and I'm worthy. Just go ahead, you try it. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I'm worthy. See, your worthiness isn't um, connected to a partner, a romantic partner. It's connected to your soul. It's connected to God. It's connected to the divine. It's connected to the universe, right? You're worthy because you're here, because you're good, because you're benevolent and kind and you have love to give and you're loving and you want to be loved and that right there makes you worthy. So if anybody told you some BS long ago that made you think when you were like little little that maybe you're not worthy, maybe somebody that you really loved and valued didn't give you enough attention or any attention at all and that sends a message in your little kid brain that ooh I'm not worthy like my parents, they didn't come get me. They left me at school. I was five and I had to like walk all the way home by myself and I was scared and uh, I had to go all alone or whatever your deal is, whatever trauma happened, that sends a message to your head that you're, you know, you question your worthiness, right? You think you were neglected, you think you weren't you know, cared for enough and that messes with you later in life. You're like, why the hell am I so needy and anxious in my relationships all the time? You can't even connect the dots. You're like, whoa, you mean to tell me, I got people telling me, you mean Lisa, seriously, you mean to tell me that the reason why I'm all anxious if this chick is dating four other people and using other dudes for dinners is because my mom made me be a latchkey kid and never made me food when I came home from school? So I have like trust issues with women around food. This is amazing, right? Everybody has their, you know, mental fuckery that happens in their heads when they are little and it goes in the subconscious mind. You don't know why. You just don't even know it's there. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know, 32 years old and you're sitting in a relationship and you're like, my head is exploding. I don't know why I feel so anxious. I don't even know what to say. And I feel all these feelings. It's like in my body even and you don't know what the hell's going on. So this is what I do for the people. I help them get to the root of what that is because once you do, you can free it, you can handle it. Like Rubik's Cube, you get the side all matched up and you're like, okay, now I see it, I get it, now I can handle it and move on in your life to be more harmonious, more like adjusted and happy and ease and flow in your relationships. So I'm hopeful that this helped you out a little bit. If you're feeling anxious in your relationships, if you're overthinking, ruminating, replaying conversations that happened and you're just like, oh my God, this is like hurting my head. I just want to chill out with somebody, watch some Netflix, have a little sexy time, eat some food and chill. And you're like, I want this, but yet I got all this mindset stuff happening and it's making me have doubts and insecurities and oh my god and then the psycho people come and they're stalking me and what's going on why why do i attract these people and you're always in that anxiety place of over analysis and freaking out over nothing there is a way out of that life's too short for bullshit dating should be fun relationships should be a joy a growth track for the soul where you're giving and getting and giving and getting and it's a nice little dance and hey Communication is everything. So if you are feeling like this is not your jam and you have not had ease and flow and open communication in your relationships and you don't even know when the last time was you lasted in something more than, you know, three to six months, let's get together. Comment below. Just say, hey, I'm watching you live or I'm watching you on the replay. If there's a question, any kind of anything that happens in your relationships that you want to share, have at it. I will get in touch with you. We'll see if we can get together and I'm here to help you out. I am Lisa the Love Coach. You can find me on Instagram at Lisa the Love Coach. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on YouTube. And if you're checking this out on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little dingy ding bell thing so that every time I upload a video like this, you get an invite to that party, honey, and you get to see it first. I love you, wishing you love and light, happy dating, happy relationships, happiness from the inside out. Mwah. Good night. I'm Lisa the Love Coach. Talk to you soon. Bye.